are the Finnish people Asian? Most people are aware that Finnish people are a bit different from other Europeans, genetically and also linguistically. The Finns speak a Finnish language belongs to the Finno-Ergic language group. Not very many other European languages do, uh, in fact it's just Estonian, Hungarian and some of the Sami languages. Now Finno-Ergic languages are completely unrelated to all the Indo-European languages uh, in, in their root which are, and Indo-European languages are spread all around the, the world, uh, of course, Asia and, um, and Europe. But they do, some linguists actually believe that long, long ago, sometime there was a common root between them, uh, a Finno-Ergic uh, Finno Indo-European language that predates the Proto-Indo-Europeans. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with this video. The Finno-Ergic peoples are the people in the world who speak these kind of languages. Now, most of the people who do speak these kind of languages are actually Asiatic peoples. Now, Hungarians don't have any Asian blood, although some of them believe, them to, believe themselves to have it. It's not true. Some of the Finno-Ergic tribes, such as the Mansi people and the Kanti people, are really Asian-looking people. Um, and they live in uh, you know, northern Russia, and when you see them, you, you think they don't look like Europeans. However, when you look at Finns, they look like Europeans. Uh, so why is that? To think about what Finns are, we should look at also what their, not just their language and the way they look, but let's go back to their pagan religion, which is very interesting and uh, comes to us now today, mostly through their epic story, the Kalevala, uh, uh, which is a great thing to read. It's a bit like the Eddas, but you know, the Finnish version. But the... Finnish pagan religion is not exactly like the Indo-European religions. Just like the language of Finnish isn't an Indo-European language, it isn't really an Indo-European um, religion. However, both the Finnish language and the Finnish religion are heavily influenced by Indo-European uh, languages and religions. The Finno-Ergic spirits of a shamanistic religion, I mean, most of the Finnic peoples in Asia are shamanistic, a bit like uh, Native American tribes, believing in spirits and uh, uh, so, uh, rather than like a pantheon of gods like ancient Greece. But what happened in the Finnic, Finnish religion is that the spirits were promoted to the status of gods and took on the roles or the names were given to roles of deities that are normally associated with Indo-European religions. Indo-European religion has two principal deities, that the Sky Father, which is the main one, and the secondary god, who is the Storm God, usually. Uh, but in some religions, you can see that these two have been conflated into one, or sometimes their roles get swapped around. It, it, but always you have these two principal male deities, Sky Father and Storm God. In the Finnish religion, a spirit by the name of Ukko, he took on the role of the Sky Father, um, and also of the Storm God. Um, and he, that is why Ukko is associated with hammer pendant, just looks a lot like the hammer of Thor. But there was also a, a storm god in Finnish religion called Perkele, uh, which is now a swear word in Finnish. But uh, Perkele is not a Finnic word. It comes from Indo-European. And um, it's related to the original Proto-Indo-European name for their storm god, which was Perkwonos, the striker. So... It may be that Ukko and Perkele were actually two names for the same god, or that they were originally two different gods that were m merged into one. And you can see this confusing sort of mixture between an Indo-European influence and a, a non-Indo-European influence uh, in the religion. And that's quite a good sort of way to, starting point to understand the history of Finnish people. Similarly, the, Finna, the Finnish language is, at its root, it's, it's Finno-Ergic but it has a lot of Indo-European loan words that have come from a long time ago. Uh, that's why some linguists have described the Finnish language as a freezer, which you, they put, once you put a loan word into it, it preserves it very well for a very long time. That's why there are actually hundreds of Proto-Germanic uh, loan words in Finnish, which are, I mean, these were obviously brought into their language Right when, right at the start of the Germanic language era, like maybe three thousand years ago, 
Um, so, and they've been preserved in those old forms. For example, their name for king is uh, Kuningas. It's like very similar to the original Proto-Germanic word for king. And not only do they have that, but they also have many borrowings from pre and Proto-Indo-Aryan languages, which are the precursors to languages, uh, Indo-European languages from uh, like uh, Asia, like uh, Iranic, in, uh, Iranian, Farsi, that is, and um, uh, Avestan and um, Sanskrit, even the language of Hinduism. So how did that happen? Well, uh, they also have uh, Proto-Slavic and Proto-Balto-Slavic words. So like the Baltic languages from Lithuanian and L Latvian and the Slavic languages that became Russian and such. But all these lang Slavic and Baltic languages uh, derived from a common language called Balto-Slavic. And before that language split into Slavic and Baltic languages, there were loan words taken from it into Finnish. And the most old of all the loan words, Indo-European loan words, are some uh, bor very early borrowings from a dialect that is very close to the original Proto-Indo-European language. It's quite ironic, actually, that one of the few non-Indo-European languages spoken in Europe is actually one which tells us some of the most interesting things about the history of Indo-European languages because it has all these different types of loanwords from their contact with all these different peoples of the Indo-European uh, group over the, the millennia. To understand the story of Finland and how this extraordinary linguistic uh, mess came about, we need to look at the DNA of, uh, of ancient Finns and of people who lived in, in Finland and Scandinavia and the surrounding regions over a long time and, and fortunately there have been lots of studies recently that have done just that and they really unveil the, the mystery of Finland to us. Um, so linguists had thought that, by the way, the, the Sami language, as I said earlier, is, a, is from the finno ugric group but uh, it is not a slightly separate group from Finnish. So lingu linguists kind of believe that the Finnish and Samic languages broke from each other about 3,000 years ago. So, um, and it's also for historical linguists think that the Finnic speakers didn't come to Finland uh, from uh, Estonia, up from Estonia, until uh, the Iron Age, um, and that the Samic types were there earlier. Well, actually, that uh, prediction seems to be quite close to the truth, um, although there's quite a complicated story behind it. So, there is no, if, if you want people to tell you things like, the Sami are indigenous Europeans. And actually, some people in Sweden actually seriously believe that. Uh, you can tell them they're talking absolute nonsense. The a tip, a common um, haplogroup that we find among Sami is haplogroup N, which is one that originates in South China. It's an Asian haplogroup. And Sami do have, modern Sami do have Asian DNA, some of it, although they've, they've over the years become less and less Asian as they've mixed with Europeans around them. But it, there was no haplogroup N in any way in Europe until uh, 2,000 years ago, around 2,000 years ago. There was none in Scandinavia, there was none in Finland at all. So um, who was living in Finland before these uh, Samic peoples and Asiatic peoples came? Well, uh, it had the first people to move to Finland were the Western hunter-gatherers, who I've talked about in the, uh, before. They're the first humans, basically, in, uh, in Europe very archaic population. And then later, around the Mesolithic, they started to mix with the ancient North Eurasians, who I talked about in my previous uh, video. And then basically you have this Western hunter-gatherer and ancient North Eurasian mix living there for a long time undisturbed. Farming, which basically, while the rest of Europe was, all Europeans are typified by the first, they have the Western hunter-gatherer, and then later the um, Neolithic farmers from uh, from Anatolia, who basically were genetically the same as modern Sardinians, have contributed to all Europe, but they never made it to the East Baltic. And farming didn't come up to the East Baltic either. So they preserved a hunter-gatherer lifestyle in Finland for longer, and, and in the East Baltic region for longer than anywhere else in Europe. Uh, so in Estonia and Finland, they, they carried on that old prehistoric lifestyle. So when they look at samples from 350 AD in Finland, we see something very different. Suddenly, the population of um, people in Finland has more Asian DNA than even the modern Sami do. 
So how did we go from having zero DNA in Finland to suddenly having a lot of Asian DNA in Finland, more than any modern part of Europe has? Um, well, that was revealed in a study this year by uh, Lamnidis et al. called Genome-Wide Data from the Iron Age Provides Insights into the Population History of Finland. Really great paper. Um, I'll read the... It's basically extracted from three teeth found in the archaeological site of, uh, of Levenluta, Levenluta, I can't speak Finnish, in southern Ostrobothnia. Uh, the radiocarbon dating on scattered femurs from the site spanned from 350 AD to 730 AD. And when, anal here's a quote from the paper, when analyzed together with previously published ancient European samples and with modern European populations, the ancient Finnish samples lack a genetic component found in early Neolithic farmers, that's what I was talking about before, and all modern European populations today. So still, they hadn't got any of that DNA from the farmers of the Mediterranean. Instead, we find that they are very closely related to modern Siberian and East Asian populations, more than modern Finnish people are. A pattern also observed in genetic data from the modern Sami. Our results suggest that the ancestral Sami population 1500 years ago inhabited a much larger region than today, extending as far south as Levant Luta. Such a scenario is also supported by linguistic evidence suggesting most of Finland to have been speaking Sami, uh, Sami languages before 1000 AD. We also observe genetic differences between modern Sami and our ancient samples, which are likely to have arisen due to admixture with Finnish people in the last 1500 years. The picture of Finland of, uh, of 1500 years ago is it's so different. It's, it's basically a, a inhabited by not even Finnish language speaking peoples, not in the European peoples, not even very European peoples, just Asiatic looking Sami language speakers. Here's what changed to make Finland the way it is now. As I said, there were no Sami people until 2,000 years ago in Europe. And the finno ergic peoples were still around, around that time they were in the, uh, the Ural Mountains, which is 2,000 kilometers east of Finland. But there was a people here in Scandinavia already, and that was the Corded Ware culture basically the origin of the Aryan peoples and the it was a very high step admixture an Indo-European language speaking people who gave birth to the Nordic Bronze Age much later. It was farm farming was never brought into Northeast uh, Baltic by the actual first European farmers, the uh, Anatolians, uh, Anatolian farmers. It was instead brought by, by the Corded Ware people who were uh, slightly mixed with them, uh, but most, mostly of stepad mixture. One man who was found at Usland in Helsingland, which is in uh, northern central Sweden, he, he was, his body was dated to about four to four and a half thousand years ago and belonged to Hapler group R1A. Uh, and it was far richer in proto-Aryan DNA than any human alive today. Very much an Aryan sort of typically person, Aryan Hapler group and Aryan admixture. And another sample from the, uh, from the same exact time, pretty much, was found in Estonia, and that had the same DNA, you know, very Aryan. So, if you took modern-day Finnish people, and, or, or, or people from Estonia, and uh, except for the fact they got a little bit of Asian in Finland, other than that, they're exactly the same as these people from these corded ware culture samples, from uh, ancient Estonia. If you look at, at archaeology now, the archaeologists have found corded ware uh, culture things from Grundsunda in northern Sweden, as well as uh, Lofoten and Tromsø in northern Norway, the latter of which are located north of the Arctic Circle. So the Aryan corded ware culture later in the Bronze Age became what we call the Nordic Bronze Age culture, which I've made a video about a Bronze Age, uh, a Nordic Bronze Age uh, barrow and, and the king that lived within. You can see that. Um, and this spread all across uh, Scandinavia and settlements in, uh, in have been found in Umea, uh, which is quite is sort of on the east coast of uh, northern Sweden and uh, as far north as the Arctic Circle uh, uh, in Choms County in Norway. These people were really widespread across Scandinavia, right up there, right up the Arctic Circle, and they didn't have any Asian DNA. And in fact, 
they were quite unique in Europe because they are much more Aryan than any human being that lives in any country in the world today. Uh, so they were basically, the corded ware had got direct uh, the, you know, proto-Indo-European DNA from the Yamna and then grew in Europe, in Eastern Europe and into Northern Europe. And in Northern Europe, it still remained very much uh, a very high amount of steppe admixture for a long time. That is the uh, indigenous people of Finland and Scandinavia. You can actually see a really nice belt buckle. I'll t look at these photos, right? One of these belt buckles, this one was found in Flaken in northern Sweden. That is really far north, and it's from that era. And this, uh, in the Bronze Age, and it looks very much like this one from Ektved and uh, Langstrup in Denmark. And that demonstrates that there was a common material culture right the way from, you know, the Denmark and con on the continent up to the north of Scandinavia. And it was nothing to do with any Asiatic tribes at all. It was an Indo-European culture. So the final part of Finnish history comes around the birth of Christ, when you get these uh, movement of Mongoloid, Uralic speaking peoples into Finland. And they were not speaking Finnish. They were speaking a Samic language related to Finnish. Uh, but they had already mixed with Indo-Iranian peoples, uh, possibly the Scythians, uh, and borrowed a lot of their words. That explains why, as I said earlier, Finnish has these very early Proto-Indo-Iranic words, the Proto-Indo-Aryan words, because the these first peoples, the first people, the Asian pe Asiatic peoples to move in to Finland had moved westward 2,000 kilometers across Siberia and such, and on the way they'd come across uh, Indo-European language speakers and mixed with them and taken some of their words into their language. So the assimilation of Baltic and Iranic DNA and language at this stage has influenced the DNA and language of modern Finns today. However, the Iron Age inhabitants, who, these, fin these um, somewhat mongoloid uh, uh, Samic peoples, they were then displaced by another uh, less mongoloid Finnic people coming up from the south over a stone from Estonia. Of course, also, they, this is bringing more Baltic and other, and perhaps the Proto-Germanic influences in, um, because this uh, Finnic people had been close to where the original Proto-Germanics were. And they came into uh, Finland and they mixed with and displaced the uh, Sami populations. And uh, this was happening over the course of the Iron Age. And then you start to see basically Finnish language replace the Samic language and that, or, or mix with it. And so then you get this language as we have described with all these uh, very archaic Indo-European loanwords, but what is this at root and its core, a, a Finno-Urgic language. And then over the course of the middle, of, over the Viking age, you get more Nordic people coming in and uh, you get that continuing with the Swedish or Russian crusades, like over the middle ages to the point that you get to the modern Finn, who is basically 95% European, with a very little bit, about 5% of that Asian DNA from the, that came in from, uh, that's left over from the Iron Age. So the Finns are unique genetically in Europe for two reasons. One, they have 5% Asian DNA. And two, e without that Asian DNA, they are the most similar people in Europe to the original Proto-Indo-Europeans. And they also have more of the original hunter-gatherer DNA than other people in Europe. So in a way, they're the most European people in Europe. And in another way, they're the least European people in Europe. But that's the story of Finns.